Good evening and welcome to this first video in our big Wednesday series uh, named after the 1978 film Big Wednesday which uh, centred around the wave above all waves that was going to be the most wavy surfing wave that ever there was, the epitome of uh, perfection if that's possible in the same way that we're going to prepare on Wednesdays for the really really big Sunday which is Easter Sunday where death is swallowed up in victory and Christ harrows hell and brings us Easter. Now it occurs to me that you might just as well be listening to this as a radio podcast. There's no particular virtue in uh, having this as a video. You know perfectly well what my sitting room looks like, but I don't have the technology to uh, do a podcast just yet. Uh, by all means, cancel the picture and just listen to my words. Uh, you may want, however, to refer to the description box uh, below, but you'll also find resources on uh, a church near you, and that will um, occur within the description box, but you might just like to go to a church near you as well. Um, there's quite a lot of printed material uh, to be uh, accrued during this course. I hope you find it useful, um, and at least if you miss some of the things I can say, you can pause the video and you can uh, go over go over it again and this video is a little little bit longer than the others I planned because I'm going to introduce uh, the themes for the uh, course and also as it's Ash Wednesday to spend some time reflecting at the beginning of Lent on what Lent is or should be and to touch on some of those readings. So first those four Lenten themes of prayer abstinence, fasting and almsgiving. Now prayer is problematic for some people. Uh, it might be problematic because if God knows everything, what's the kind of point? Uh, prayer can often be, if we're really sort of heads up, a fairly sort of formless stream of consciousness and a list of things we'd like God to do in our own time, maybe rather than God's time. Well, it's great to have a list of needs, uh, perhaps well prepared, uh, that we pray through very prayerfully. Uh, God knows all the necessities of our hearts, but it's still a good discipline, yes, to identify them. However, I'm going to suggest that in this penitential season of Lent, why don't we just let prayer be that quiet time where God speaks to us uh, through that silence and in, if we can attain it, that beauty of holiness. Now, abstinence has really some puritanical overtones and in its narrowest, strictest form, I suppose it's restraint from um, or cessation from anything that's um, well a bit titillating, anything sort of sensual, uh, even conjugal things. But my belief, and uh, I hope you accept this in the spirit with which it's intended, certainly coming from a single man, I think abstinence me needs to be observed, as it were, more generously and widely in other aspects of our life. And it can be a thinking about, do we really need X or Y? Do we really need these foodie treats? Or do we really need this little bit of retail therapy? And fasting, again, often misunderstood. It's not about starvation or um, making oneself ill. It's a, it's a discipline. It means on one day skipping a meal or two and praying with or even through the hunger, it may be painful, that ensues. Now, obviously, if you have a medical condition and it would make things dangerous for you to do that, don't do it. But try and do something on a Friday, extra prayer, and try and refrain from meat on Fridays. Uh, but of course, you can include fish. I think that's very, very well known. And so to almsgiving. A really, really sensitive one, even when it's not Lent. Um, so, but over Lent, can we discern uh, a better deployment of our financial resources, particularly for the relief of poverty and suffering? Or even in the case of our PCC, which is very, very resource limited, so that we can do something about that on your behalf in terms of our mission to those who are in need. And we can still keep the roof on. We don't have those resources drained by our, our mission work. And in fact, it shouldn't be drained by our mission work because we need to make money, put aside money for 
our mission work and maybe you can help uh, in that during Lent and maybe beyond. And the point about giving of any kind is that it really ought to be a bit sacrificial. And if it's sacrificial, it means it needs to hurt a bit. And in this case, it might uh, hurt a bit in the pocket. And just a brief word about the 40 days. Uh, if you add together all the days between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday, you get to 46. Subtract the Sundays and you end up with 40. And so Sunday remains, if you like, a day of feasting. And it is, after all, our weekly celebration and recollection of the institution of the Lord's Supper and that glorious resurrection. So you can enjoy yourselves on Sundays. Uh, so to the readings for Ash Wednesday, which you can find on a church near you uh, in the Sunday by Sunday uh, panel. First, I'd like to pick out a phrase from the book of the prophet Joel, which reinforces those Lenten themes. Joel says, rend your heart and not your garments. And rend, as you may uh, realise, means to, to tear or to, to rip. And you may remember that as Jesus died on the cross, the curtain in the temple was rent in twain or ripped or torn in two. And well, not and, but but our rending is not to be an ostentatious display of piety, like that certain Pharisee that prayed in such an ostentatious way that attention was drawn to him. Our rending needs to be a tearing and repairing of our inside. You know how sometimes things need to be broken a bit more so that they can be more effectively mended and remembered. So our rending is of our hearts, of our interior lives. They can be better reassembled and ordered. And second, uh, scroll right the way forward to the Gospel reading, uh, where Jesus refuses to condemn the woman caught in the act of adultery. OK, he doesn't condemn, but neither does he or can he condone it. But he asks her to change her ways and to sin no more. And this means repentance, a turning away from those acts that lead to darkness and reorientate ourselves to those actions that lead towards the light. Metanoia, repentance is metanoia, it's a turning around. And Lent is also a time to be generous, I think, in our attitude towards other people and to be kind about our own shortcomings as well. I don't think... We need to be excessively strict, mean and puritanical. And we'll, we'll be reminded of this in the hymn, which you can play uh, from the description in the, the box uh, below this picture. Uh, there's a wideness in God's mercy. Uh, there it, it's, uh, and uh, we, we, we have to be mindful that uh, God's mercy is unimaginably more generous than ours can be. And so to the Sunday ahead. Uh, all the propers, that's to say the readings chosen for the day and the special prayers, uh, can be found on the Sunday by Sunday section of a church near you. Uh, I'm not going to touch on all of them, but just a couple that sort of frame, if you like, the theme for the day. We have the myth of the Garden of Eden. Uh, the creation of humankind and the emergence of sex and gender in the appearance of Eve. And then the apparent uh, explanation of evil that is just um, hugely problematic if taken literally. And it's, I think, written in a way that I don't think the writers intended to be taken literally, but actually contains some really interesting insights into the human psyche that it doesn't take much for us to stray. And I think people will be very, very surprised. Those writers, every bit as intelligent as us, but living in a very different world, would be very surprised if they knew that people were taking this story absolutely literally. And the theme of the day is about Adam and about Christ as the new Adam, as expressed in the reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans. <clears throat> Adam is us male or female. When Adam is created, he's a sexually undifferentiated creature. His name doesn't change 
when, as it were, the, or the name doesn't change when Eve emerges. That's uh, the mystical sort of emergence, if you like, in, in Genesis of human sex. But uh, the human beings in Genesis are just as human as us. We are human beings. And it's Christ that comes as the new Adam, who is a human being. is everything and more than Adam, because Christ is fully human. We are not, I don't think, fully human. We put so many objects in the way, particularly which we beat ourselves up and beat others up, which prevents us fully flourishing and functioning as full human beings. And I believe that in our pursuit of perfection, we focus maybe rather more on those divine aspects of Christ, what it is to be a Christian, rather than those human aspects of what it is to be a Christian, we run before we can walk and we trip over because we're striving after the divine rather than the, the human. I think we can approach the one from the other. So this is where I just pose something that may um, be a little bit um, interesting or quizzical for you. Um, if we want to be more Christ-like in the theme of the gospel, which is the temptation, ought not we to be tested and wants to be tested. Does it make sense in the Lord's Prayer to say, and lead us not into temptation, or in the modern version, lead us not into the time of trial? If we're firm in our faith, what's the problem with a bit of temptation? I'll just leave that out there for now. Just a few thoughts as you prepare for Sunday ahead. So I prepared for myself, uh, bully for me, a little booklet for uh, Compline, which will be as a, a PDF. Uh, the pages, I think, might not be in the right order, but I will try and squeeze all of this in the description box below. Uh, I hope the formatting is all right. But uh, if you don't want to join in, just allow me to do the said and, and spoken parts, uh, the, 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 the said parts of the efficient and the said parts of the uh, congregation as well. Uh, I'm sure by the time uh, this little series is over, we'll have worked out a way of doing it. The most important thing is not to fret, but just allow yourself to be drawn into the peace of this night office. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We spend a couple of moments reflecting on the day past, those encounters we've had with God, those things that point to God, and those moments perhaps where we've been too busy and het up to be open to God's presence around us. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Psalm 139 and at the diamonds, it's custom to have a short pause for a few seconds to allow the Holy Spirit to move through that time of brief silence. O 
Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my down sitting and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For if there is not word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain unto it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Even darkness has no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand. And at the end, I am still in your presence. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may be on this life still be with you, where you are alive and reign for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked and cover them, and not hide yourself from your own kin? Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings. Christ died for us, so that whether we wake or sleep, we might live with him. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ died for us, so that whether we wake or sleep, we might live with him. Now follows the time of prayer and reflection, and you may wish to pause the video at this point to resume when you're ready. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you've made, 
and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty God, may we, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, that by following in the way we may come to share in the glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you, O Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. I hope you found this useful, and apologies for my errors of omission. And you may choose to click on the link to that wonderful hymn by Faber, and that marvellous, marvellous tune by Maurice Bevan. And I look forward to joining you next week when we look forward to the readings for the second Sunday in Lent. Good night.